Tomorrow, we pause to remember the 2,403 U.S. military members and civilians who were killed when the Japanese attacked Hawaii's Pearl Harbor in 1941. The chaotic and tragic event marked the beginning of U.S. involvement in World War II. WRTV's Mark Mullen sat down with a veteran from Indianapolis who remembers his role in helping to end the war. When Robert Pettigo first got a taste of being in the military, he was just a teenager. I was the youngest one on the bomber crew. Now he's 97 and the only living survivor among his other Air Force brethren. It was a gigantic accomplishment, a gigantic sacrifices, but uh, we succeeded. You know, well, we had no choice. You know, it was do or die. Pedigo, an Air Force bombardier, remembers the day when Allied forces finally defeated Germany in what is known as D-Day. In fact, the day before, Pedigo's squad commander, Jimmy Stewart, yes, the one of Hollywood fame, gave Pedigo and other airmen a pep talk before lights out. The afternoon before D-Day, uh, Jimmy called us a uh, squadron at a time, four squadrons. He called us a squadron of time out into the middle of a wheat field away from all buildings to brief us about the next morning. And even then he didn't say what it was, but we'd been anticipating and, and we surmised what it was and we were right. But, and I can pretty much remember his words. It was, he was very brief. And he said, fellas, we got a big mission in the morning. To get to bed early, he said, there'd be nobody coming going on a red alert. The base was locked down, no, nobody coming or going. So we'd be getting up early, so get your rest. Morning came early at 2.30 a.m. the next day, D-Day. And Pedigo was one of the first up in the air, part of an air assault over Germany. It was my easiest mission, but we lost 12,000 men that day on the beaches. And had it not been for all the bombing we did, we had, uh, we had Germany uh, bombs of the, the, the smithereens of the ground before the invasion, so actually D-Day was ready for a mop-up. The U.S. had resisted entering the war, but after the devastation and loss of American lives at Pearl Harbor, the U.S. involvement was inevitable. Pedigo, a treasure himself with spoken word history, wants generations now and in the future to never forget the lives lost and those who gave up so much to end a war. Well, how, how great the sacrifices were to stop it, end it, win it. Hey, uh, Eighth Air Force I was in had the highest percentage of losses of any military unit in World War II. It was like flying into hell. Mark Mullins, WRTV. Mark, thank you. And Pedigo tells us he did survive 30 air battles over Germany. He is 97 years old now, but the Indianapolis native finally received his diploma from Arsenal Tech High School at the age of 93.